Every year since '05, I've watched, you know, the final table and just kind of, you know, looking back and thinking, hey, wow, I, I was really there. And I'm starting to think, I wish I was able to enjoy it more than what probably appeared because we had, we had played seven straight days. And, I mean, there were 12 and 14 hour days. So there was just a lot of time that you didn't get any sleep. And I don't sleep much anyway. But I'm thinking, God, these guys had off, what, a few, three, four months or so, and then they could really get pumped up and, and really. And then I was looking at the table. And I tell you, it was really boring. These guys weren't talking. They weren't doing anything. And I remember we were all tired and giddy, all nine of us. So. We were just chatting at the table and having a good time, and it was uh, uh, quite often I've been told that, you know, that was one of the better final tables ever because of the chitter-chatter, and we weren't hiding behind patches. Oh, absolutely. You guys had fun. Now, when you say you wish you could enjoy it more, did you mean, I mean, you were having fun while you were playing. You're talking about the layoff, the three-month time frame. You think that's good for poker? I think that we had one day, like a one-day layoff to just kind of collect your thoughts and, you know, just kind of catch up on sleep and, and energy would have been a little bit better there. I mean, but hey, if I had a choice to do it all over again, I'd do it exactly the way it was because... I, I think coming back three or four months later, I, I don't think I would have probably finished in second at that point. Why do you say that? Because, you know, as in, you know, not necessarily a poker is gambling, because we know it's a game of skill. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think gambling or, or life is about streaks. You have your losing streaks, your winning streaks, your feel-good moments, your not-so-feel-good moments. They're full of energy. So when you're running good, or just, just running, and you don't want that disruptive flow. And it's funny because Greg Merson, I think it was last night, or I had him on my, uh, my show last week, Jackpot Radio Show, which is new, which I know you already know all about it. But um, Greg had said, he said about preparation, he says, you know, I didn't really prepare much because I'm there to react how the other guys are going to be playing. So I can't put a plan together and go there, those guys all put plans together, and he said, I reacted accordingly. I'll tell you something, Greg is a really smart guy. Not only is he smart, but he's, he's, he thinks well, in other words, he, he, he talks well, he, he thinks through things, and that's probably why he's such a good, you know, he's a great poker player. You know, there's a lot of great poker players out there that we don't know about because they didn't win their coin flip. And sure, Greg was down to two and a half blinds at one time, and had he not won, we would have never really known about Greg Merson so much. If you think about it, yeah, he won his, the bracelet before that, but if he... Well, that could, that could be said about a lot of players, couldn't it? It is, sure. So there's a, I think there's a lot of talent out there that just hasn't, they, they haven't won their coin sets. But, but Greg was able to, you know, he's a good player, and he's, he's, won, he's, he's played as many hands online as anyone, and then times 10... Uh, and he's got the experience, but he's he's a smart guy, he really is. And and, and a lot of times people look at poker players not so smart. And I've, uh, we've obviously seen some champions in the last eight to ten years that aren't so smart. But very top notch guy. I'm I'm uh, I was pretty excited about having him on my show, but I was really impressed by his answers of some of the tough questions that I gave him.